I just got the Platinum Trophy in Persona 3 Reload and this is how it went. Most of you probably know Persona by now, but for some context Reload is about a high school transfer student who after a series of mysterious events ends up awakening a unique power called Persona. Basically this is the manifestation of the soul or so to speak. With this new power we take on the world, on the shadows that inhabit a mysterious hour after midnight called the Dark Hour. During this time regular humans are transmogrified into coffins and those with the potential roam free. At night we can also explore a large dungeon called Tartarus to learn the secrets of the Dark Hour. The other aspect of the game is living a regular high school life, hanging out with friends and strangers at times to build social links and bonds that help with numerous aspects of the game. This part of the Platinum can be tricky as everything is based around a regular calendar, giving us limits on when and where we can do certain activities. Certain characters are only available on certain days and some won't even talk to you until you have the right social stats to do so. And also I'll be trying to keep this as spoiler free as possible, so let's begin. We begin the game transferring to a brand new dorm and spend the first few days settling into school life. Right off the bat we can unlock our first trophy on the roof and shooting ourselves in the head and unlocking our persona. Yeah, that's trophy, obtained Orpheus. We learn that everyone in this dorm has a persona and we join the specialised extracurricular execution squad or CEASE for short. The goal of this group is to delve deep into Tartarus, a large dungeon that has appeared in the place of the school during a hidden hour after midnight called the Dark Hour. And we got ourselves a trophy for that. I make my first trip to Tartarus and I plan to go as far as the game will possibly let me in the one run to save more days for social links. And in here we unlock our first combat trophy. There's no eye in team almost straight away. Oh, we got a trophy. There's no eye in team. Forming a shift. As you explore Tartarus and defeat enemies, you can trigger a reward system called Shuffle Time. This used to actually shuffle before. Now it stays completely stationary, which is a very nice addition. Here we can get extra personas, XP, money and more. I should probably mention Igor, Elizabeth and the Velvet Room. Once you have a few personas, you can fuse them with Igor to make stronger ones. Each persona has an arcana, like Hierophant or Justice. Now I'm not familiar with Tarot outside of the game, but in Reload there are 22 major arcana. These are all directly related to social links, and we need to find and max out every single one for the only really missable trophy, a legacy of friendships. As your bonds level up, the XP gained when fusing a persona of that arcana increases, so it's really helpful. Elizabeth also gives us requests throughout the game, and we need to do as many of these as possible to work towards a distinguished visitor. Also, we grab the first of many here too. Oh. Formed a dyad fusion, that's good. Now, the thrill of the hunt can be unlocked by finding and ending one of these annoying gold hands. We like to run around a lot and usually have resistances to most things, so early on it's just trial and error and hope they don't leg it. Either way, there's plenty of these throughout the game, so you should definitely get this one quite early. There we go, the thread of the hunt. Eat the rare golden enemy, let's go. Tempting Fate is for triggering a skill change accidentally during fusion, and this is honestly really annoying most of the time, so I recommend saving before any important fusion choices. Oh no. No! No! Ah, oh, why? I didn't want her, man. Hey. Ah, oh, mate. No way. Watch, watch, watch this. Dinker. Dinker. Tempting fate will change your infusion. And they just gave me mad ZO. After making my way through most of Tartarus, we snagged 10 different personas from Shuffle Time. Again. Power of choice. Obtain 10 personas during Shuffle Time. Nice. Before reaching the end of the first block, every 28 floors or so we will be blocked off until the story event come the full moon. So throughout the rest of my time up until then, I spent most of it hanging out with social links, and improving my social stats by getting rinsed at the arcade every night. Now I've got to be honest, the social links in the game kind of did my head in. Most were very one dimensional and boring characters, and some I literally had to skip parts of dialogue. But also the game is centered around the themes of death, so that translates into the story as well and most of the side content too. I'm surprised to say the story alone made me tear up twice and full on bore my eyes out once as well. Full Moon arrives and we take on the first boss of the game. Now I'm only playing on normal and so far everything's been pretty easy. So we take down this boss with no problems, unlocking a story trophy. Oh. The next month begins and I head into Tartarus the first chance I get. Now I do this for the first few months but in a little while we'll be going close to the end instead to save the missing people who wander into Tartarus and get lost. In the next block we unlock three simple trophies close together. The best way to trigger shuffle time is abusing all out attacks. 
If you hit enemies weaknesses and knock them down, all out attacks will wipe them out usually and has a higher rate to give us rewards. Do this 50 times to unlock. The same goes for surprise encounters, 50 of these gets us another trophy. Shrouded Assassin. And of course it won't be an RPG without treasure chests, so open 50 of these and that's also another easy trophy. Oh, briefcase burglar. This next trophy, Gourmand, actually requires a little bit of work. And there are three different ways you can get this. However, the way I chose to do it is by eating the Weekend Wild Duck Burger set. Wild Duck Burger, which is available on weekends after completing Elizabeth request number 11. Oh, we got a trophy. Ordered from a secret menu at the Iwatodai Strip Mall. Top of the class is for acing an exam. They usually last for around four days with some questions from previous lectures probably ignored just like me. After a few days, the results will be posted and we can unlock the trophy. Eagle Eye introduces a new item, Twilight Fragments. These are used to unlock sealed chests in Tartarus. There are around 20 or so in the entire town. It can be found in every available area. So do this during the daytime as they're not too hard to find. Hey, we got the last one. Full Moon rolls around once more and we take on another boss. All right, that's both of them down. And we got the Empowered Protector Trophy. And then back to the real world and we unlock Dorm Life for hanging out with the teammate at night. And this time we planted some crops on the roof. Now this will be important in a little while. And also I maxed out my first social link and probably one of the more enjoyable storylines too. Thank you, baby. Ooh. That's not a social link. From this point onwards, the missing persons start to show up in Tartarus. Some of them you could get away with missing, but sometimes social links end up in there too. And if you don't save them, then you can screw up the whole link. On my next run in, we managed to save our first one, and this grants us... Another way to get Twilight Fragments is from requests, and Elizabeth also gives us some from time to time. After using 50 of these on either the healing clock or the chests, you get a trophy. Oh. The Fool's Journey is for unlocking 10 major Arcana cards during shuffle time. These cards can give nice benefits like added XP, extra picks and even more. Also, our crops have grown not long later and this gets us... Eat your veggies, peas. Full Moon comes once again and we take down another shadow, of course, getting us a trophy. Now for Benevolent Protector, we need to buy 4 super cat food from the pharmacy. Head to the outskirts and feed this cat back to back four days in a row. One of my favourite requests to be honest. Benevolent protector. That's the cat back to full health. Nice. And for our final contestant of the day. What happened? Is something wrong? Oh car. <laughs> By July, after a lot of wasted money at the arcade, we ace another set of exams and max out our first social stat. Yeah. Ah, level 6 charm, and we got a trophy. E -e -e. After completing three hangouts with a character, it unlocks new combat characteristics, and these can also be really helpful, especially when Yukari unlocks half MP cost. The lightning spike, heavy electric damage to all. Oh, okay. When leveling and fusing personas, at times they can unlock an item that they will give to you out of respect. Hey! And an item from a persona conception. To unlock the rest of the major arcana and get beyond the darkness, you need to clear the monad doors at the end of each block and defeat the mini bosses throughout. Some of these can be tough, but you can return to the entrance, save and prepare for these, and you should have very little trouble. Nice. And we got a trophy. And again, full moon boss trophy. You know the drill by now, that's for sure. In high demand is simple, just accept five requests to hang out and boom, another easy trophy. Oh no, I got a trophy just now. Fusion Artisan is for fusing three or more personas at once. Now this is how you unlock most of the best personas in the game. Also you need to reach rank 10 on the social links to unlock some of the best ones too. And we got Fusion Artisan trophy person. Or fusion with three or more personas, nice. A new mechanic they added in is Theurgy. These are amazing special attacks for each character that can really trivialize some enemies and bosses. This next trophy, the strength of our hearts, is for using every single character's special. Light spoiler here, this one is missable, so make sure you're using each character as you get them and use the theurgy at least once. Healing 999 damage in one attack is very easy and unlocks naturally through Tartarus if you're using theurgies often. Oh, 
199 damage in a single attack. It doesn't really count because there was two attacks, but I'll take it. And yet again, another month, another full moon, and another trophy. I don't know he's dead. Roger Lightning, defeat the Hermits. The Monad doors from earlier also have smaller doors throughout the levels, which usually just have one mini boss and some average rewards. 10 of these gets us a trophy. Now after I got this trophy, I stopped bothering with them as they felt like a waste of time and SP. Well, what's that for? Discovered and conquered 10 Monad doors, nice. But this next boss I actually want to mention for being annoying as hell. The stupid horse keeps spinning a roulette wheel and can wipe so much of your health it's crazy. I didn't feel like I'd ever lose this, but I think this was the first time I actually had to have a healer on hand throughout the whole fight. This one goes down like the rest once we get rid of his protector friend. Nope, we just defeated them. So I've been going to the arcade, answering questions in class, hanging out with many friends, so on the 26th of October I managed to level up our final social stat. There we go, I was worn off. And we got a trophy. Back in Tartarus and we run into our first dark zone. It's pretty self-explanatory, the area is just dark. Nothing crazy to be honest, but it grants us a trophy. Yeah, uh, we got the trophy. And once again, the next boss is super easy and we cruise through, getting us another trophy. And at this point, I've done a decent chunk of the social links now. I no longer have any social stats to grind. So now it's time to work on doing as much part-time jobs as possible. I need to earn 50k and unlock this next trophy. Mindset, mindset. After completing around 80 of Elizabeth's requests, she's asked to be invited to your room and you get to have a sus moment with her. If you wouldn't mind, I'd love for you to guide me through. Thank you. Huh? I feel as if I've become an entirely huh? different person. Oh, distinguished visitor. Of course, with this being a social sim, you can romance some of the female characters. You can't do it with all of them, otherwise you'll piss off the one you're going for. I obviously went for the best girl and get myself this next trophy. And we got that special someone. Some story things change the perspective of the characters and each go through a small emotional awakening, unlocking their ultimate persona. And once everyone is awakened, we unlock. Newfound strength. That's a cop. Yes. Oh my god, I just realised. That's horrifying. This next fight is supposed to be the hardest in the game. Spawn the Reaper, you just need to spend a few minutes on a single floor for him to show up. I filled up my Theogies and used Sylphic Aura from Fuka, allowing us to ambush him for the first turn. Now unfortunately, it actually didn't pose much of a challenge. And I kind of wish I didn't play on normal. As long as you have a persona that blocks into death moves, for me I already had Lucifer, and you can survive this with some good buffs and theogies. Should have it now. There we go, Reaper Reap. Defeated the Reaper. I actually thought it was going to be kind of hard, but it really wasn't. This fight got me all the way to level 89. Get the next trophy path to salvation. First we need to create Thanatos at level 78. Fuse him with Orpheus at level 91. This creates Messiah. So I did another run at the Reaper, unlocking us 91 easily. And we fuse Messiah, who I actually don't like much at all. Here we go, path to salvation. Used Messiah. Now, during December, the group ponders a massive story decision, and it's pretty obvious which one is which, but make sure you keep up the fight to get the good ending. The other option ends the game early. Now, it may have taken all the way until January, but we finally unlock our 20 second social link, and there's not a lot of time left to squeeze it in. And we got the People Person trophy for unlocking all social links. So, for the rest of the month, leading up until the final battle, I spend it with Aegis, and max out her link, finally unlocking link 10. The legacy of friendships. That's now all social links. And we take down the final boss who looked absolutely insane by the way. With that done, we have our first Persona Platinum. Another great Platinum to add to the collection. See you all in the next one. And there we go. The most remarkable guest.